in this class we are going to see different approach towards history optional there are certain issues which many students used to face when they are about to take the optional many students are interested in history and even they wanted to take history as an optional also despite their strong interest there are some doubts and some misconceptions because of it students are not able to take this as optional with full dare and for those who want to take the optional history as their optional and those who have the doubts which are common to everyone let me try to clear those doubts first of all if i broadly underline or outline what are the major issues which are hindering the students to take the history optional means these are the challenges and these doubts making the students doubtful that even before taking the history as their optional and also those who already has taken still with these doubts they used to prepare but one point is going to be common in many of the students that history very much liked by many students so let me try to clear these doubts so that you will have better idea better understanding about the subject and with this knowledge at least your decision is going to be proper one first one huge syllabus this is very general fear with respect to the history optional because if you see the history notification the upsc notification the history syllabus you will find many pages so it is very genuine fear also huge syllabus outward appearance again when we see something outward appearance or immediately when we see something we are afraid of it but when we know something little bit then we will start liking it and we will never be afraid of that now you see this huge syllabus this is general fear for many students with respect to history but how you have to think those who have taken the history optional and those who want to take the history as optional need not to fear about this particular fear because huge syllabus in the notification doesn't mean it is really very big very vast only it has given in a very detailed manner so if you take a small topic you can write about the topic in 150 words also 50 words also even you, you can write an essay in 1000 words also if you see something in 1000 words then you may be afraid of it this much big but if you see the same thing in 150 words or 100 words it appears very simple but will it make just words doesn't make very big or very small so that is what it's all about description similarly here detailed segregation of syllabus is the main point with respect to the history optional syllabus each and every part is clearly defined suppose if i give only unit names without clearly defining what is there inside the unit it appears like a very small syllabus just i will list out only the unit unit 1 unit 2 unit 3 unit 4 like that and 12 lines 14 lines it will come that's it it doesn't make the optional easy if you just see only 12 lines but if you elaborate it it appears very big so even though it is appearing very big it doesn't make optional very big also so you can convert the syllabus into 12 14 lines also you can convert entire syllabus into 50 lines also when it comes to the history optional the second part detailed syllabus for every unit what are the portions sub units or topics which we need to read or study for the examination because of this syllabus is appearing very big 
if you take it as a positive way, UPSC is clearly mentioning what topics we need to study in each and every unit. If you study those topics in that unit, your preparation is done for that unit. Even though you take some time to prepare one unit, but if you, whatever is given in the UPSC notification, if you read one by one all the topics, your preparation is done once for all. Because of the detailed segregation of the syllabus, it is appearing big. So in fact, it is advantageous to the history students because they need not to worry about the hidden topics. There are no hidden topics when it comes to the syllabus. So most of the time, most of the time, and sometimes if question paper is very difficult, we cannot say, but most of the time, questions will be directly from the topics which are given in the syllabus itself. That's why it is a positive aspect, in fact, if we see very detailed manner. Suppose if you take current affairs, let us think. I can compare this with current affairs. This is the best example to compare. In prelims examination, there is one line with respect to current affairs, national and international. Current affairs are issues related to national and international importance. Single line. Does it make current affairs small subject? Not at all. Because there are so many hidden topics. National in current affairs means so many things will come. Current affairs in international means so many things will come. There is no end to it, and there is no boundary to it. But with respect to history optional, there is a clear-cut boundary, and there is no hidden topic, very clear. So this is the best example you can compare. Detailed segregation of syllabus doesn't make the optional very big. You have to take it as a positive sense, and clearly UPSA is giving very detailed way, so that you can just put tick mark. Once you read it, that's it. Very easy to handle that. Second part, sources. And again, out of interest, many students used to read a lot of sources. Because once, if you are interested on something, you will dive deep into the subjects, and it will become very difficult to come out of it. It should be very careful, because if you take positive aspect, you need not to worry about the sources at all. For each and every topic, you have the sufficient, you have sufficient sources. NCRT sources are there, IGNO sources are there, standard books are there. History, no dearth of subject books at all. And only problem with that is you should not take few topics and you need not to go very deep on the same topic. Many references are not required for the examination. You have to see purely in terms of examination. If you see purely in terms of examination point of view, you need not to worry about many sources. Whatever sources, I'm going to show you the book list also. Once you see the book list, again, there are many layers of books. Many layers means first layer, first level, NCRT level. If you read it, at least 40 to 50 percent of preparation is done. Next layer, more standard. And above that, some more. And above that, some more. So you can keep on increase the layers for one topic itself. But we need not to worry about to clear the examination. Because if you get 300 plus score in history, you will be the topper. And if you get a 320 plus, 330 plus, that means you are going to be the topper in the history itself. Because very rarely you get beyond T325 beyond. But still, if you follow properly, nothing is impossible in UPSC history, because those who will get very good score in the next year, they may get very low score. Those who get low score this year, they may get toppers. They become toppers also. So in UPSC, anything is possible. We cannot say anything about UPSC. But if you follow the systematic approach, high chances are there to become the topper. Sufficient sources are available. This is best. You have to take in a positive sense so that you need not to worry, you need not to keep on search for the sources. That makes, again, if you keep all the books in one place, if you stack it, full stack, then it appears so many books and history appears very big. 
but if you identify a few topics in one book few topics in few topics in then if you take out only few topics then it appear it's very small so it is all about the attitude the way you look at the subject the way you look at the books static and easy to maintain checklist even though it has given very detailed syllabus it is advantages to us because after reading for example you can take this is the first chapter unit 1 sources is the first archaeological sources clear cut you can have that once you study exploration excavation epigraphy numismatics monuments you have sufficient resources like upender singh lot of amount amount of information is there nothing to worry about that but once you read it then your preparation about archaeological sources is done once for all so once you read it then you take the notes then you revise it that's it then you will not you need not to worry about current issues also because more or less with respect to history current developments may happen something if anything during excavation time period if something very unique thing comes out then it becomes very big current development but it takes slowly takes with respect to history every development goes in a very slow pace that's why even though if something happens in the current in the present year where when you are going for examination mostly the question will be it's a combination of static plus current in mostly more in the most cases you will not expect any current related question current development may become the inspiration you need to see the difference asking a question to write something on the current development is a different question that is you will get in the current affairs in general studies part but taking inspiration from the current development and asking a static question that is what in history is going to happen suppose in harappan civilization if something related to drainage system or water management system or some other unique feature comes out it can become inspiration for upsc to ask a question on the town planning or water development or the drainage system how what we learn from the harappan people so likewise it can be an inspiration to ask content will be from the same source same static book only that's why you need not to worry about the current issues also just you can read the syllabus according to the syllabus put a tick mark once you have done it that is once for all your preparation is done with respect to that particular topic let resources indigenous primary secondary poetry scientific literature literature in regional languages and religious literature for each and every topic you have the sources again greek sources chinese sources arab writers foreign accounts so for each and every sub topic so this is you need to take it is an advantage of giving very detailed suppose i can convert this into simple unit 1 sources then simply i will write only archaeological literary sources foreign accounts so suppose if i write sources archaeological literary sources i can convert this entire syllabus into just four words i will not mention anything what is hidden inside what do you mean by archaeological what do you mean by literary sources without mentioning anything what are the sub topics simply i can convert sources into archaeological and literary sources but for student it is going to be hell if you don't know what is there inside then this is what why current affairs is becoming so much difficult 
even though every student read a lot of content with respect to current affairs still at the before going for the examination still some kind of doubt that current affairs not prepared very well despite lot of preparation so much material in current affairs because there is no detailed topic list if upsc gives the topic list of current affairs let it be 20 pages need not to worry at all because boundary is given exactly that boundary if there is no boundary it becomes very difficult without giving boundary just mentioning few words doesn't make the syllabus small so this is what this is the way history optional student should take care and you need not to worry about the syllabus it appears very big but those who have already taken and those who want to take you look at the syllabus as a positive thing it has given detailed manner so that for history optional student nothing to worry about hidden topics just you read one by one your preparation is done with respect to unit 1 same is the case each and every chapter each and every unit very detailed way very clear manner crystal clear about each and every topic so while you are preparing also you can easily track the progress that suppose when you are reading about this unit early medieval india 750 to 1200 political development major political developments in northern india and peninsula origin and the rise of rajputs so if you read about rise of rajputs done your preparation is done so it is talking about political development and clearly it is giving what are the sub topics then cholas in south india what is happening administration village economy society indian feudalism agrarian economy urban settlement trade and commerce again society women science and technology so each and every topic very clearly mentioned by upsc it is advantage to the student that nothing to worry about hidden topics no hidden here everything crystal clear just you read get some content write read about this topic write short notes your preparation is done so likewise in the first round it may take some time because very clearly it is given so you need to go one by one step by step in the initial phase it may appear slow but once you pick up the moment it becomes very fast and you need not to worry about the other preparation same is the case you take any unit first unit second unit third unit like that conquests consolidation establishment of jagya mansab system rajput policy religious social outlook theory of sulhai kul religious policy court patronage of art and technology so again very detailed manner nothing to fear at all step by step you can read what is rajput pol rajput policy details theory of sulhai kul detailed then art and technology art and architecture technology wise just you have sufficient resources you take any source get the content you read it that's it your preparation is done for this once you are very clear with this topic let upsc ask in any manner on sulhai kul itself in different way upsc can ask the question still it will not create any trouble for you so this is how you need to look at the syllabus because this is the very major obstacle mental block with respect to history optional despite strong affection towards history optional many students are not able to take with courageous manner that's why my purpose of this class is to make you very clear that you need not to fear about the syllabus in fact it is one of the best things about history optional that clearly defining the syllabus giving the boundaries of the syllabus it will make the student that 
very clear what topic is left. Suppose if you have done this, then you can put a checklist that this part is done. In this unit, only four topics are left. Then once you have done this, then you can have a checklist that two topics are 100% done. You have only three things. So that's why, because of this, it is making huge syllabus. Because of this detailed segregation of syllabus, it is appearing very big. Nothing to worry. It helps you in putting a checklist so that you can keep track of the development. Next one. This is another major issue with respect to history optional that there are so many facts, there are so many years. First one is huge syllabus. Then those people, OK, even after crossing this hurdle, then again next doubt will come. There are so many facts, so many people, so many places, so many years. How to handle this? Suppose if you read in story format, let us take an example of any epic. In our history, we have two great epics, Ramayana and Mahabharata. In every religion, there are different epics. So whatever may be the local epic or local legend, if you read or if you listen in a story format, in those epics, so many characters, so many people, so many conversations used to come. But despite this much big, for example, Mahabharat, the name itself is saying Mahabharat. But if you, once you listen to that, then you will not forget the people names, you will not forget the story, you will not forget the conversations among different characters. This is why, what happened. But if I tell you in a different format, without a chronological way, without connecting the dots, then it appears very difficult to remember it. So this is all about the narration. So if you read history in a narrative way, automatically your brain connects the dots. That's why if you connect the dots with landmark events, then before that landmark event, your brain automatically trace all the developments before that and all the developments after that. Then without any pressure, without any pain in the brain, you will remember most important facts which are required for the examination. This exam doesn't require every fact because it is all about, suppose if you are asked a 10 marker question, in 10 marker, how many facts are required? 150 words, 250 words maximum. So in 250 words, 100 words, whatever facts that are required for this space, if you connect the dots and if you read history in this format, without any pain, you will remember it. So you should see history like a movie. Three hours movie also, those who are very much interested in movies, they can explain, after watching the movie, they can explain to the friends that each and every scene, what happened in the beginning, next, next scene, third scene, until the end of the scene. So why? What is that? Reason means that the way you look at the movie and the kind of interest the movie generates in you and the kind of narration. If you can try history also like this, then you will never worry about this. In fact, this is going to be very helpful in your understanding of many developments. Next third one, low scoring. This is also one part which is making people are afraid of apprehension about the history optional. Now, if you see this, there are two parts. One is map pointing is there, another one is theory part. Most of the students are very much comfortable in theory. They will write. They will get 40 to 45 percent. Map comes for 50 marks. Suppose if I remove 50 marks from the paper, that means 250 mark paper. If I remove 50 marks, 200. So if I consider only 200 marks question paper, most of the students will get 100. Most of the students, 50% of the marks they used to get. 
but when it comes to the map it is a highly dangerous zone but it is both having advantage also disadvantages also if you are very good in map you can reach up to 80% of the score that means 40 marks also you can get out of 50 out of 50 you can get out of 50 40 also so 100 plus 40 140 and if you get 110 plus 40 150 in paper one that's why most of the time unless paper is very difficult in other questions also if UPSC asks very difficult way and if you are not able to make choice of difficult questions then your course score may go down in theory part but map is one point if you do not give special attention you will be pulled down to out of 50 you may score 15 marks 20 marks only but potential is there till 40 marks if you put special effort for the map then reaching 300 is easy <coughs> sorry so reaching 300 is easier when it comes to history optional provided you are good in map and last year first ranker was from history optional and her scores 150 in paper 1 156 in paper 2 306 so 306 and possible so that's what 300 plus score in history is possible if you plug there are certain areas which need special attention if you do not leave those areas and if you give some special attention to those areas getting 300 plus score is very easy so special focus is required on evidence this line is the crucial part when it comes to history optional because while you are reading we read narration we read all the developments very good to differentiate between general study student and optional student this line makes difference as a history optional student you should be able to provide some evidence whatever you are saying in the examination if you say something agriculture Harappan people knew agriculture you should corroborate that particular statement with some evidence in which locations agriculture related evidence came out different type of crops different type of grains and the lands for our land and different so all these elements you need to be able to give with evidence and this evidence and the map marking both are interrelated this is what you can convert the weakness in map into strength of your preparation because if you are weak in map you are going to be weak in giving evidence also if you are strong in map you are going to give good evidence also so now it is like a double-edged sword if you neglect one part you are going to face difficulty in other part also in theory also you will get less score so map also you will get less score and in theory also you will not be able to give much evidence then they're also problematic but if you are good in map in map also you will get very high score and those map markings you can use as evidence and in theory also you will get so 300 plus is easily achievable if you concentrate on this area so that's why map and evidence bo both go hand in hand if you give special attention to this evidence some historian names some places and some people names if you can give these evidences definitely you will get reaching 150 is not that a difficult part in both papers in paper 1 150 150 plus and in paper 2 150 or 150 plus so 300 plus you can easily score and if you are good in other general studies and essay also you will be the topper so with history optional also you can become the topper last year itself upsc has given the evidence that with history optional you can become first ranker also because upsc it is not only about optional optional plays very dominant role in making you 
in making or breaking the examination. But if you are good in optional, you will, your scores will be going to be very high. And if you are good in general studies essay also, you will become the topper. Now, I will end this class by giving some additional benefits. Here, UPSC has given detailed syllabus with respect to history optional. And this history optional syllabus is also going to help not only in history optional, but it will help the same knowledge will help you in other aspects also in the examination. This exam contains prelims, mains, interview or personality test. When it comes to prelims, many questions, history is one of the core areas in static part in prelims, we can divide current affairs, static portion. In static portion, like history, geography, polity, economy, some static portion is there. And history is one of the important subjects which you cannot ignore while you are going for the prelims. So if you are strong in prelims, if you are strong in history, minimum 10 questions. So sometimes question may go up to 18 questions, 19 questions also in history and art and culture, both if you club. But a minimum 14 to 15 questions used to come from art and culture and history. Even if you remove some of the difficult questions, but 10 questions are going to be very easy. But remaining questions for history optional students, they can answer the other little bit moderate and higher level questions also if you are having history optional. So there also you can get fetch, you can get good scores in prelims also if you have strong backup or foundation in history optional. Next, when it comes to mains, in mains GS1, GS2, GS3, GS4 are there. In GS1, syllabus is about history, geography, and society. So history, art, and culture is one portion. Around 75 marks out of 250, 75 marks used to come from history and art and culture. So in this 75, you can get good score with history optional useful in main GS1 history and art and culture and in society also because history is nothing but you are reading about Indian society since ancient times. So our syllabus is also society during Mauryan time period, society during Gupta time period, society during post Gupta, society during Mughals, society during in modern times, socio-religious reform movements during British time period how the society was. So society, you are, we are going to study in history about society. Whatever society they are giving in GS1, it's nothing but the society after independence. But you cannot clear cut, you cannot separate the society before independence and society after independence. Our society is a, an evolution, a continuous continuation of society what was happening since ancient times. That's why history, art and culture and society, in society also our history knowledge will help. Society around, suppose if you remove geography, geography 100 marks, minimum 100 marks, sometime it may go to 110 marks also in geography. So 100 or 110, if you take for geography 100 marks, out of 250, 150 marks. 150 marks from history, art and culture, and society. This is going to be huge determining factor in GS1. So now you see, in prelims also, history knowledge is helpful. In GS1 also, helpful. And in polity, when it comes to GS2, there is polity. Again, in prelims also, you have polity. With respect to polity, there is a topic evolution of constitution. Evolution of constitution, it doesn't mean suddenly it happened after independence. Our founding fathers of constitution worked so hard or fought against the British to bring reforms in the political system. 
for the last before 1947 at least if you consider 1857 revolt as a landmark event since 1857 revolt there were so many developments that continuously were progressive even though so much demand was so much pressure was there from indian side on the british britishers were not giving full reforms with respect to indian political system as the freedom struggle enters into the very severe stage after 1885 particularly after 1900 non cooperation movement home rule non cooperation civil disobedience movement they were giving certain constitutional reforms so we got certain constitutional reforms these constitutional reforms particularly if i give specifically precisely government of india act 1919 government of india act 1935 particularly 1935 act played a dominant role in our constitution because for these provisions we fought and whatever we got in 1935 government of india act they were included in our constitution again historical development historical knowledge will help you in understanding our constitution and why different provisions why fundamental rights are given why dpsps are given why fundamental duties are given so like this all these things have some kind of connectivity with the history in polity also it will help you to understand useful in international relations this is another area where history knowledge will help you a lot india and neighbors india sri lanka relations russia ukraine war china taiwan crisis if you consider the current issues every current issue might have some kind of issue in their history so this history good part of our, about our history optionally is we have to study old history also when we study world history some of the present developments in different parts of the world have the problem that originated in the history and we need not to worry about their origin we can suppose if you don't know the origin it becomes very not clear even though you are reading current affairs it will not be clear to you why it happened why exactly what happened earlier as part of history optional itself you are going to study and when you are reading current affair current development it will not make you any difficult to understand it and in fact your analysis is going to be very different and very useful when it comes to the second paper gs2 international polity these two are part of gs2 now you see in prelims also helpful in gs1 also helpful gs2 also and useful in ethics in ethics again when you are writing ethics along with the jargons if you give some important people names from our own indian history different personalities since the beginning of brahmanical vedic tradition then buddhism jainism many philosophers they have given different issues different uh, philosophies if we quote those philosophies and their teachings along with their people then it is going to be very mass fetching in ethics so here also history examples can be used in answer writing with respect to ethics so ethics paper for gs4 also helpful useful internal security threats faced by india since ancient times we study about uh, history so many invasions took place since ancient times as part of history optional we are going to study what are the reasons why one dynasty was very much strong for some time and why this powerful dynasty is going to be crumbled because of certain invasions or because of certain pressures from the outside so what happened and similar kind of threats india used to often face the similar kind of threats and because of these threats whenever these threats emerge it is going to affect internal politics also today we are seeing democracy one government suppose if something happens near our borders it affects the internal structure of our country governance of the country everything is going to change decision making is going to be a different one similarly in history also such kind of developments multiple times it happened and once we understand the threat it is very easy to understand even the present context also what threats are emerging in the present scenario 
to understand internal security also our history is very much important essay also in essay you are going to quote many personalities many quotes many developments from history again there also strong history knowledge will make you to give good examples in essay now you can see if you have history with the one is having interest many students do have interest but due to some apprehensions they are not able to go for this optional mainly like syllabus huge syllabus but i try to clear you that it is not huge one it is a detailed one you make it as a positive one and second part not scoring but it is a scoring one and i try to explain you in which areas our scores go down particularly we will not give the evidence and we are not strong in map but if you are able to handle those two aspects this part is also done need to remember facts and years that is another aspect if you read chronological wise narration wise that part also will be taken care and next one the other advantages also i explained you so this will make history optional will help you in different stages in prelims also help general studies also help optional paper anyway it is helping in interview also when you are asked a question if you have good communication skills you can bring so many things from history to whatever you are saying this it is like giving evidence so whatever when you are writing mains answers whatever you are writing you need to give the evidence and in interview whatever you are speaking you have to give the evidence history will give a lot of examples to give you the evidence so in interview stage also it will help you that is why history optional is one of the important topics one of the important core areas or one of the pillars of our upsc preparation itself irrespective of the optional whether you are an history optional student or not doesn't matter but you are expected as a upsc aspirant psp student you are expected to have minimum idea about history of india and history of the world that is why gs1 general studies it's common to everyone whether you are history optional or not syllabus is both ancient india medieval modern old history also sometimes they are asking question sometimes they are not not asking but in syllabus it is there that means as a upsc student you are expected to know something about history and if you are a history optional student it will help you in other areas also and history optional also this is how the way you need to look at history optional so with this i hope it will help you it will make you to take informed decision the main purpose of this video main purpose of this class is to make you to help you to take the informed decision about history optional yesterday we have seen different stages of mains examination importance of optional mars how many mars first ranker also got and today we have seen different apprehensions about history optional and the way you should look once you are deciding to take history optional you should take it as a positive thing and you should convert it into positive aspect so that you get maximum score in history optional here we will stop this class in next class i will come up with other issue which will help you in making you understanding history optional this is what with respect to syllabus and how the the way you should look at history optional thank you thank you we will meet in the next class